करते हैं आपने इसी तरह खूबसूरत अंदाज में जो है नारा लगाना है और अपने कबिला पेशा का इस्तेमाल करना है नीर
one of our famous scholars. And in the midst of Awami and his Sunnah, Alhamdulillah, it's so wonderful to see the jazba and the passion and the muhabbat and the aqidat and the ishq of the Awam, Alhamdulillah. The pandemic here has not taken this ishq and jazba and muhabbat away, although uh, many of us missed Rabbi Lawal Sharif last year, Alhamdulillah, Awami and his Sunnah uh, alive and as they say, alive and kicking, alhamdulillah. Time is uh, incredibly short, um, and uh, much of it is due to uh, partially my fault, maybe for uh, setting off late, but there's a lot of traffic on the, on the way. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept um, our attending, our meeting, our majlis, a most uh, honorable and beloved must, uh, beloved mahfil of Bilat al Nabi. The topic is a very interesting and uh, different topic. Uh, I don't think I've ever uh, had the opportunity of speaking on this particular topic, the state of Medina. The state of Medina, how Medina Munawara was home, not only to the Muslims, but Medina Munawara was a home for Jews, Christians, and people belonging to different faiths. And uh, the reason, obviously, the magnet and the, and, 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 and the central point of this civilization was our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. About whom the Quran says, "Fabima rahmatin min Allah ilintala." It's the rahma of Allah subhanahu wa taala that He placed in your heart. And you were very tender and very kind towards those people around you. If you were hard-hearted, and you were harsh towards people, they would have dispersed. But the reality about our beloved Prophet ﷺ is that our beloved Prophet ﷺ is full of rahmah, is full of mercy. And this sifat of mercy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned throughout the ayat of the glorious Quran. Now, this topic obviously has a lot of relevance now as well, uh, particularly in the modern climate of the world where Islam is seen as a religion of violence, of extremism, uh, and all of these other labels that the critics of Islam label against Islam. What we have to remember is that the basis of Islam is on free will. Free will. There is no compulsion in Islam. One of the first revelations in Madinat al Munawwara was the revelation of Surah al Baqarah, as the honorable scholar before me was uh, referring to Surah al Baqarah and uh, Namaz becoming part and, and Zakat and Hajj and all the uh, pillars of Islam became part in Madina. But central to the Islamic teaching is that Aqidah and belief is not based on compulsion. You cannot compel anyone, you cannot force anyone to accept Iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La ikraha fi deen. There is no compulsion in deen. Qad tabayyana rushtu min al This guidance is clear and it separates itself from misguidance. In Islam, the guidance and the power of Islam, the status of Islam is manifest. You know, we who act upon Islam, who believe in Allah, believe in the Prophet, we know that when we are in a good state of Iman, when we are in a good positive frame of mind, and we are following the teachings of Islam, we feel this wonderful security, we feel this wonderful spirituality inside us. <coughs> and we don't really need to prove that we are in a state of tranquility, in a state of peace. We don't need any dalil, any proof for this. It's rather like 
you have a machine, for example, you've got a heater, and you turn the heater on, and it gives you hot air. How does it do this? It's irrelevant. How does this mechanism work? How does this machine work? It's irrelevant. The fact is that when you switch the button on, automatically you are given the gift of heat. Similarly, when a person follows the principles of Islam, we feel this spirituality. We feel this peace. And when we move away from Sirat al Mustaqim, even for a few moments, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, but sometimes shaitan overpowers us, our nafs overpowers us, and we move away. Straight away, we feel this darkness, we feel this unease. And this is proof from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this is not Sirat al Mustaqim. Sirat al Mustaqim is that one that you were following before. So there is no compulsion, there was no compulsion. This is why in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, in the beautiful city of Medina, people belonging to all the faiths lived side by side with the Muslims. Lived side by side with the Muhajireen and the Ansar of Medina. And the Prophet ﷺ's beautiful character and beautiful preaching. Let's take one example, we don't have much time. Well, let's take the example of Sayyidina Abdullah bin Salam radiallahu ta'ala. Now, Abdullah bin Salam was a prominent Jewish leader in the Medinese community. He was respected by all and had many followers and many people acknowledged his status as a Jewish leader and as a Jewish scholar. Now, Abdullah bin Salam mentions his own story that he had studied the sifat and characteristics of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the They were very clear. The signs of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, his beloved description, and where he will reside, where he will stay, everything is clearly mentioned in the Torah. This is why there was a large community of Jews who lived in and around Medina. Because they were anticipating the arrival of the final messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Abdullah bin Salam was no different. And he had heard about the Prophet ﷺ, that this person is matching the description given in the Torah. And that amazing day came when our beloved Prophet ﷺ made the migration from Mecca to Medina. And Abdullah bin Salam ﷺ mentioned that at that time he was busy on his dead palm taking days off the tree when someone came and broke the news that Muhammad the one who claims to be a messenger has arrived in Medina, has arrived in Quba now Abdullah bin Salam when he heard this wonderful news he was on top of the tree and he was already in anticipation because remember the Torah the Quran says الَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابَ يَعْرِفُونَهُ كَمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ The ones who bestow with knowledge of Torah recognize the Prophet as they recognize their own sons. <laughs> they recognize the Prophet ﷺ. And he knew that this has to be that person who we have all been waiting for. <laughs> Sayyidina Abdullah bin Salam hears the news and he jumps off the tree and he's so happy and so overjoyed at the arrival of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He jumps and he does the takbir, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, out of pure joy and happiness. Very much like the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'at. In the month of Rabiul This is the Rasul who's going to give us Izza and he's going to give us honor and we can have Izza and honor because of him. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah, we have the same happiness when the month of Rabi Awal comes. Because we have gained from the Prophet. The world has gained from the Prophet. Muslims and non Muslims alike have gained from the Prophet. As someone very beautifully mentioned the arrival of Rasulullah in his beautiful poetry. He mentioned how Rasulullah came and what impact 
did the arrival of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam have on the world? He says, "Nagaha sakinha." Nawab Sadiq ul Hassan 
Bobali. Uh, he writes, he's what they call the Mujaddid in the, in the, uh, you know, the Firqa, they call him the Mujaddid, great revival of the deen. He writes that anyone who does not display happiness when <laughs> listening to the events of Mawlid and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he doesn't deserve to be called a Muslim. <laughs> That's his fatwa. That anyone who does not display happiness. Now, how amazing was that time when Abdullah bin Salam radiallahu ta'ala anhu hears the news of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam coming to Medina. He said, I wasted no time. I ran and hastened towards the assembly and majlis of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when I came and I put my eyes on the beloved face of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When I looked at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa for the first time, I recognized straight away, this is not the face of a Ghazi Malaya. This cannot be the face of Malaya. That face had such beauty and such radiance, subhanAllah. The face of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which as someone said is Asli Quran. Mustafa Asli Quran So, he says that I'm looking at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I'm, I'm blown away by the beauty of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I'm just, just so fixated towards the Nurani face at that moment as I was taking this in, I heard my first ever sermon, my first ever khutbah from the noble mount of Rasulullah sallallahu I just want you to concentrate on this khutbah. We only have five minutes, I think, to the end of the program. But I want you to look at, this is the basis of Islam. These are the core teachings of Islam. Before namaz has come, before hajj has come, before anything else has come, before all of these things are being made for us, the Prophet والسلام, in his beautiful manner. Now this is the first khutbah Abdullah bin Salam is hearing from the noble mouth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what is the khutbah? Very short and beautiful. Abdullah bin Salam narrates, he says, the Prophet said, Ayyuhan Nas, O people, O congregation, Afshu Salam. Afshu Salam. Make Salam a common practice amongst people. Give people Salam. Say Salam to people. Afshu Salam. Spread peace. Wa atri'imu ta'am. And give food for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Give food to people, at'imu ta'am, help the poor people. Afshu salam wa at'imu ta'am wa silu al-arham And join blood ties. Very difficult thing to do. I don't have time to do some salam. It's a very difficult thing to do. Join blood ties. Keep your relatives together. Keep families together. Silu al-arham wa sallu bil-layl wa al-nasu niyam وَصَلُّوا بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّاسُ نِيَامُ And pray in the middle of the night when people are asleep. What will happen? تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ بِسَلَامُ You will enter Jannah in peace. SubhanAllah. These are core teachings of Islam at that particular time. And this is the basis of the status of Medina. The state of Medina. The state of Medina was based on these core principles. Our predecessor talked about Adl and Insaf being fair. Islam goes one step beyond this. It's not just about fairness. The basis of the state of Medina is Ihsan. Kindness. Not just about being fair. But go out of your way to help people. This was the way of Rasulullah The Prophet enacted all of these beautiful teachings. And look at this beautiful, short, concise khutbah of Rasulullah the noble speech of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So beautiful. The Prophet sallam, was given jawami ul kalim. Jawami ul kalim means short statements full of meaning. Short sentences full of meaning. Allah Hazrat Imam Ahl Sunnah, he described the speech of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Tere samane yu dabelache fusaha
Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam delivered this beautiful khutbah Abdullah bin Salam radiallahu ta'ala anhu immediately declares his shahada and accepts the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He already accepted. He already accepted the Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when Abdullah bin Salam went home, he invited all of his family towards Islam. And later on, he came to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, I am so respected amongst the community. Ya Rasulullah, if you put me to one side and you call all the Jewish community of Medina and ask them about me, what do they think of me? What's their opinion of me? So Rasulullah Sallallahu called everyone and said, what do you say about Abdullah bin Salam? He said, he is the most honorable, he is the most knowledgeable. The Prophet said, what if he has accepted me as Rasulullah, as Messenger of Allah? They said he would never do this, he would never. And Abdullah bin Salam comes before the Prophet and he declares his shahada. Subhanallah. And this is the spirit of Madinatul Munawwara, beautiful spirit. And it's where Jews happily lived. Let me give you one example. A Jewish man in the marketplace, he said, I swear by the Rabb of Musa Musa, the most honorable prophet. And the Sahabi heard this. And the Sahabi said, even more superior to the Prophet to Muhammad He said, yes, Musa is the most superior. And he became so enraged, he slapped the Jew. His natural reaction. But that Jewish man, he knew that there's only one person, one authority, who can get justice for me. He didn't go to his Jewish leaders and his family. He went straight to Rasulullah He said, Ya Rasulullah, this is what happened. The Prophet called the Sahabi and said, he rebuked him. He told him off that you should not be doing this. This is not. Because Islam, as I mentioned, is a deen of tolerance. The only time when there was hostility, I have to remember a very important point, so there's no confusion, that you see in, his, in, in Sirah, there are moments where there's hostility. This is only when someone rebels against the state. For example, so remember in Islam, in a Muslim state, the authority is for Kitabullah, Book of Allah. The authority is for Islam. The leader is carrying this out, this duty. So anyone who speaks against Islam in a Muslim territory, in a Muslim country, will be punished because he is rebelling openly against the authorities. This is where harshness will come. And this applies everywhere. If somebody you know, was a citizen of Britain, and stood up and said, I don't believe in anything here. Well, people say, well, get lost and go wherever you want to go. Go somewhere where you enjoy living. If you don't appreciate these things, go elsewhere. So that's where the hostility comes in. But we know throughout the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the, the physical life in this dunya, of course we believe to zinda hai wallah, to zinda hai wallah. The Prophet is alive now, even in the grave, just as we are alive on the earth now. The Anbiya in Iran, their bodies are untouched by the earth. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah Ta'ala has made haram on the earth and ta'kul al anbiya The Nabi is alive. This is why we are allowed to pray next to the grave of any Prophet. We're not allowed to pray in the Qabristan normally. But the grave of a Prophet, you can because the Nabi is alive in his grave. But the Prophet ﷺ, at Miraj, he saw Sayyidina Musa Islam praying in his cover. So he was alive with the physical body, doing the actions. Brothers of Islam, so these hostilities that we see, it's not hostility, what it is, it's keeping peace, law and order in the community. That's all it is. But the Prophet ﷺ had dealings with the Jews. The Prophet ﷺ dealt with them in the marketplace. <coughs> they would see the Prophet ﷺ. Nobody was forced, nobody was compelled. And anyone who came into the city of Medina was welcomed and they were brought closer to Islam and these sermon that these khutbahs were given to them, many of them, alhamdulillah, they accepted Islam and they became known as the noble jamaat of the Sahaba Ikram al But just one final little message I want to give you. A small little story which I find very, very beautiful and it's uh, probably the lesson that we can take um, as the, the previous uh, Ali was saying that all of these things we need to you know, adopt ourselves. You know, we talk about the Prophet Ali Salaam having rahmah. We need to have rahmah in our hearts as well. We need to be kind. We need to think about these things. These things will make Rasulullah proud of us. When the a'mal and deeds are, are, are presented in the court of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet will be proud of his ummati and say, this ummati, he did this good thing. He was kind to his neighbor. He was kind to so-and-so. He was kind to his relative. He fed someone. He did this. 
the Prophet would rejoice and he would thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The story is about someone selling their house. So when you sell a house, obviously you put a value on the house. So this person, he sold his house, but uh, uh, the price that he placed on the property on his house was a very high price. People said, look, look at the other houses. No other house is going for so much. Why is your house so expensive? He said, look, you're looking at the house, you're looking at the quality of the house, you're looking at the rooms, not many rooms in here, you're looking at the quality of the bricks and the, the mortar and everything. But look, my neighbor is a Sahabi of Rasulullah My neighbor is a Sahabi. It's not easy for me to vacate this house, to leave this house. My next door neighbor is a Sahabi. And this price that I'm demanding is because of this beautiful neighbor that you have, that you're going to be living with. Brothers of Islam, we should have this just by inside us. That wherever we go, whichever community we're in, people when they look towards us and say, this is our land of Rasulullah This is the Ummah of Rasulullah May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give myself the tawfi, give us all the tawfi. First and foremost, to, to, to act upon these, uh, these things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our beautiful gathering of the Islam. Amen. Accept all these mahafil, this beautiful trend that I think Rochdale has the credit for. Many other towns have tried to imitate this, but Rochdale gets all the credit. You and me, uh, Awam, the Awam of Rochdale gets this credit. Whatever this is happening, inshallah, all those brothers and sisters who participated in making this mahafil a success, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.